for the official introduction. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we would like everyone to please rise for the national anthems of the respected fighters, both challenger and champion. Here to sing both national anthems, first the national anthem of the United States, and then the national anthem of Wales, please welcome Mr. Wynn Evans. Oh, say can you see but early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars so the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in a gape roared through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Mr. Frank Warren for Sports Network in association with the Tournament of Contenders and www.frankwarren.tv is proud to present the main event of the evening 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World sponsored by the news of the world, big on boxing, rockstar energy drink, party like a rock star. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Chairman Charles Giles, President Lord Brooke Tremorphan, General Secretary Simon Block, World Boxing Organization and President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest on the 10-point system from Canada. Harry Davis, from Puerto Rico, Jose Rivera, and from Belgium, Andre van Gotembrel. Inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action from Birmingham, England, Terry O'Connor. And now, 
for the 35,000 fans here in Millennium Stadium, Cardiff Wells. And for the millions watching around the world on television, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Waiting out of the red corner, wearing green, red, and white, official weight, 11 stone, 12 pounds. His professional record stands at 29 contests. 26 victories, including 12 victories by knockout and three defeats. From Providence, Rhode Island, USA, the challenger, the WBO, number six ranked contender in the world, the Italian warrior, Peter Manfredo. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with white. Official weight, 11 stone, 13, three-quarter pounds. Professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 42 contests. 42 victories, including 31 knockouts, with 24 of those KOs coming in four rounds or less. He currently is the longest reigning champion in the world, and tonight, makes the 20th defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, from Newbridge, presenting the fighting pride of Wales, member of the British Empire, the reigning, defending, undefeated, WBO super middleweight champion of the world, Joe. Reality boxing is to real boxing on this level as the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas is to the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Is Manfredo a real contender or a reality contender? Well, I believe that Ben Fred is going to fight a good fight. I just think the inside worry of him and his pride is going to make it a very interesting fight. Calzaghi said, I would prefer that Manfredo come right at me, as has been his style in some other fights. But I have a hunch that he'll try to fight smart and box. So I'll watch in the first round and determine whether I have to attack full scale or whether I'm going to get a chance to counterpunch, as is my preference. For the moment, it appears Manfredo much like Steffi Bull against Amir Khan, wants to lay back and make Kalzaki come to him. But unlike Steffi Khan, I think Manfredi is going to punch. I mean, Manfredi has very good short active punches too, which can present a problem to anyone. Kalzaki has tried to go to the body a couple times early. Manfredo looking upstairs. Manfredo has not been able to land anything like a jab in the early going. Manfredo claimed that he'll be able to feint Kalzaki into bad positions. It's very difficult to do that against Kalzaki, who is extremely well balanced and tends to be able to throw equally well with both hands. Crowd loves Manfredo in the corner. Kalzaki goes to the body. Manfredo tries to come over the top. See, once you see him getting close range, you see Manfredo does a little better than Lacey did because he has very good short punches himself. But, but Calzaghe normally fights very good in close, which is surprising for a guy as tall as him. He knows how to slip an angle and shoot uppercuts even when he's in close. And the sheer speed of his hands is a factor in that regard, too. He's able to get off a lot of punches in short bursts. 
he doesn't load up on any one punch. He's just accumulation of punches, what he depends on to win his fights. He's got the happier feet and the happier hands. There's already a slight red welt on the outside of Joe Calzaghe's left eye, probably the result of head contact. It would appear that there's likely to be head contact in the fight. Calzaghe a southpaw, Manfredo a conventional fighter. Both fighters trying to come forward at times. But Manfredo is, is having a little more success than he normally would if Calzaghe had fought at long range. And what Calzaghe did was good right there. He's punching and getting out. When he punches and stays inside, it gives a chance for Manfredo to land short punches, counter punches. And as Manfredo held Calzaghe's right hand, Calzaghe got free weighing with the left and got in several shots to the body and one short punch upstairs. There's a winging right hand by Calzaghe as Manfredo tries to go with the right hand to the body. Round one was competitive. One coming out, jab and coming out, all right? Just a minute. Follow the strong, strong jab, all right? Mm -hmm. Follow the strong jab, all right? That's what you mean, don't make hard work or something. Oh, something. There's no fucking... No fucking thing or what? Where's the fucking thing? Oh, buddy, you okay? All right, get up. How you feel? He ain't got nothing. He's slow. Yep, feel him out nice and relaxed. There you go. Get the jab going a little bit more, use it to the belly. He comes in with the your belly with his jab, straight right hand. Just stay relaxed so you'll get off with it. Nice and fresh. Two American-based fighters, Andrade and Lacey, have challenged the two top 168-pounders in the world in the last year or so, Calzaghe and Kessler. American has yet to win a round. Tommy Box numbers in round one. Calzaghe 13 out of 47. Manfredo 9 out of only 31 punches attempted. Emmanuel Stewart, Peter Manfredo's regular trainer, is Freddie Roach. But he was not with him to prepare for this fight because, as almost everyone who follows boxing knows, Roach, on a one-time only basis, is in Puerto Rico training Oscar De La Hoya for his fight with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Even Manfredo acknowledged, I don't have exactly the same confidence in my father, even though he trained me when I was a boy, as I have in Freddie Roach. How badly do you think it damages Manfredo in the fight? I think it's definitely going to hurt him a lot, especially when men used to working with a certain uh, trainer. And a lot of it is to do with mentally, what you feel. He feels very comfortable with working with Freddie. And he, he himself admitted he's doing everything that he can do, but he knows it's not the same. On the other hand, Sugar Ray Leonard, who is part of the contender program producing staff, uh, has taken over the role of advisor in Manfredo's corner and says that he will try to tell father and son if he sees something they can do. Can Sugar Ray Leonard be of help? I don't really think so in this case here. And in particular, the way that uh, Calzag is fighting now, he's fighting very smart. You notice where he was leaning in and laying in the first round. Now he's punching in and out. And he's keeping the distance and taking and utilizing his reach right now and is making everything difficult for Manfredo now. Manfredo. As Calzaghe tends to relax more, his hands seem to get faster. Catches Manfredo yeah. with a little right hand there. Now Manfredo Calzag tries to answer back. Yeah, Calzag Calzaghe is fighting. Perfect fight now. He's in and out. His punches are more accurate and, and using his height. And right now, Manfredo really finding it very difficult to get back into the fight as compared to the first round. Straight left hand by Calzaghe. Manfredo eats it. Manfredi's plan was to try to get to Calzaghe's body and slow him down. So far, he hasn't been able to get there at all. Right hand to the body by Calzaghe. You heard Enzo, or excuse me, Peter Manfredo Sr. telling his son when he throws the right cab to your body, come back with a straight right hand over the top. Easier said than done. Yeah. The sky's egg is going in and out, in and out. And, and it's very difficult now for Manfredo to counter punch. See, he's there, he lands the left hand and then he pulls right back out after he lands the punch. And you begin to see the lightning hand speed. Remarkable for a 168-pound fighter at 35 years old. All of his opponents keep saying, well, he's going to slow down. It hasn't happened yet.
next Sunday night. It's the premiere of Delaware Mayweather 24-7, a four-episode series featuring exclusive behind-the-scenes access to both fighters as they prepare for their May 5 mega showdown. April 28th, Boxing After Dark returns with a terrific lightweight matchup. But Asselino Popo Freitas risks his title against Juan Diaz of the USA. May 5, Oscar De La Hoya puts his 154-pound title on the line against pound-for-pound king Floyd Mayweather in a mega fight in Las Vegas. And May 19, it's a middleweight doubleheader featuring 160-pound champion Jermaine Taylor against 154-pound titleist Corey Spinks. Also that night, what an undercard fight. Edison Miranda and Kelly Pavlik face on in a battle of two of the fastest rising stars in the sport two big right hand hitters in the middleweight division for all that and more log on to hbo.com jabs in the second round Kalzaki 11 of 47 by CompuBox count Manfredo 1 of 13 Peter Manfredo gradually ebbing out of the fight instead of getting more into it through the first couple of rounds now you're seeing Calzaga's right jab becoming a factor in the fight more and more as the fight is moving on. There it is, a right hand counter punch yeah. by Calzaga. Yeah. Caught Manfredo coming in. Then clocks him with a left hand over the top. Manfredo just not fast enough to deal with Calzaga's amazing speed. Unbelievable speed. And his punches are very accurate punches too. Calzaga begins to hammer it home. Manfredo waves him in as if to say, come on, but can't find a way to answer with his hands. No, nope. in fact, Calzag is beating him at close range. His punches are so straight and accurate right now. And it begins to take on the look of a non-competitive sparring set. Most American writers seem to feel Manfredo would be able to go the distance. Well, it's going to be very questionable up. if he can't find a way to answer back. Calzag is fighting a perfect fight. This is a far more focused Joe Calzaghe than the fighter who struggled for times against Saki Obika in October. And Fredo finally gets off the punch and then is hammered into submission against the ropes. Referee Terry O'Connor watching and watching and he'll stop it right now. And Fredo simply couldn't throw. I did not like the stoppage. I didn't either. I did not like that stoppage. I thought... The man was not hurt. He, was he wasn't hurt. He wasn't hurt. In fact, he was trying to... It, you get the feeling he was trying to let Calzaghe... Absolutely. Punch himself punch out. Punch himself out a little bit. But at the same time, we saw the fight. The difference between levels in all athletics is your quickness. And the difference between reality boxing and real boxing on this level is just too much quickness from Joe Calzag. Guys, I don't think there's any question it's a premature stoppage, but Manfredo had to realize he was on Calzaghe's own court with 35,000 screaming fans watching every moment. If he couldn't find a way to answer back, he should have. His hands simply weren't moving. He was... He, he, yeah, regardless of what it, that fight should not have been stopped, I don't feel it. I, I agree no, that no, it's, no too, way it's way too it. quick a stoppage. Yeah, it's too quick. It's getting, but it, it, Manfredo it, it, has to know that if he yeah. doesn't throw back, the possibility exists. Right, and it, it robbed Calzaghe out of a great victory. He was on his way to winning by a stoppage anyway. CompuBox numbers in the abbreviated round three. Calzaghe 26 of 92. Manfredo 3 of 13. When your opponent is throwing 92 punches and you can only get off 13, you invite the possibility that an overzealous referee yes, yes. jumps in. And you know, the guy like Calzag, his punches was very well aimed and pinpointed. It wasn't like he was throwing wild punches. So it was just a matter of time before he would have won by TKO anyway. Harold Letterman tells us that even in the rules meeting yesterday, Manfredo's people were complaining in advance about the possibility of a quick stoppage. So their worst nightmare comes true. And it gives Manfredo to go, a chance to go home still somewhat of a hero. He didn't get knocked out. And he can always complain that it was a premature stoppage. Well, uh, you know, that may be, but we saw what we saw. And what we saw was that every time Manfredo was setting himself to punch, he was either getting hit or Calzaghe was stepping back out of range. He was never really in it. He never landed anything significant. He never showed that he could compete on this level. No, the difference in talent level was abundantly apparent. 
one minute, 30 seconds. Well, I was very, very three. impressed. The winner by TKO victory, and still the undefeated WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World, the Fighting Pride of Wales, Joe.